when, when I finally, you know how we struggle for years to try to get to whatever the, we think is the big time. I realized later on in my career there is no big time. It's just all show business. We're all in show business. And what we know as comedians more than anybody, there is no funniest or funnier, and there never was. You know, there's only one rule in comedy, be funny. That's the only rule that we have. But when I finally made it to Caesar's Palace with Sammy Davis Jr., after my first Tonight Show, my whole life changed. And Sammy Davis Jr. took me on the road. Being in that limousine, driving down the strip of Las Vegas, where I always dreamed I'd go, to see your name on the marquee with Sammy Davis Jr., most big acts wouldn't let the opening act have their name on the marquee. Tom Jones and Diana Ross, when they put their name up there, there wasn't room to park your car in a parking lot, you know. Sammy Davis insisted that I have my name on the marquee. He said, well, set a precedent, Tommy, that when you get your name on the marquee, then any act you work with afterward, they have to give you the same kind of billing. He was a very, very generous guy who never forgot it, were the, the dues he paid in show business. But after that first night of appearing in Las Vegas with Sammy, I went into my dressing room and I wrote this down. As far back as I can remember, or shortly thereafter, I love to hear the sound of laughter. Whether grown-ups or children, it really didn't matter to me. If I could make people laugh, I was as happy as I could be. You see, when you make people laugh, they get such a lift. My mom once told me, this is a God-given gift. She said, because you'll get so much love, and yet you're still able to give. I knew that I wanted to do this for as long as I live. So I left my home in Harvey, Illinois, to tour around the country and spread some joy. Success was ahead, I just didn't know how far. Soon I was broke and sleeping in a car. I worked and I prayed and I planned and I dreamed. There were times I was alone, or, or so it seemed. And I begged for jobs everywhere I could, and I bombed a lot of times. But I started getting good. They laughed in Boston one night, I'm proud to say, and soon they were even laughing out in L.A. Now, if you're a comedian and you want America to know, you had to get a spot on the Johnny Carson show. Well, that happened one night, and what a break for me. Soon my name was on Caesar's Palace marquee. Well, God's been with me now, and I've gone pretty far. Who knows, maybe one day I'll become a big star. But if I don't, it won't matter at all. Believe me when I tell you I've had a ball. So now I wish for everyone what's happened to me, to find the work that you love, because that's really the key. So when I die and go to the hereafter, I'll miss all of you, my friends, but most of all, I'll miss the sound of your laughter. That's a pretty good. Yeah. Now, I wanna, the one more I want to do for you. <clears throat> this came to me years ago, and I wrote it down. It was after a big show. After I did this big show, and, and, and I was opening for Sammy, I walked across the stage, and all the laughter that was out there was gone. I, it was after the show was over, and I was going out to the casino, and I looked, and they're gone. They're all gone. All that laughs are gone. And I went back and I wrote this. He sat inside his dressing room feeling 10 feet tall. He could still hear their laughter echoing through the hall. Many long years of struggle, nights inside the car had all been worth this moment. For tonight, tonight he was a star. Suddenly a man walked in, 80 years old if a day. He said, sorry, son, I thought you'd gone. I'll clean up if I may. The young man said, go right ahead, sir. I won't be very long. He said, hey, I'll bet in your time many funny men have come and gone. Am I as good as those before? He heard himself exclaim, surprised that he had asked that, but compelled to just the same. The old man smiled as if he knew the hardships of the game. He said, yes, son, I've seen them all and the way they handle fame. Now, you've got more than most I've seen, but if you really care to hear, come back out on stage with me and let me have your ear. You see those empty seats out there that held your many fans and that picture of your family and friends that's on your makeup stand? Well, when the sweet applause has had its day and you're left alone, the truest fans who knew you then will still be there at home. He said, wow, thank you, old man. And what is your name? You've given me more than my fortune and fame. He said, my name, my name is old Freddy. I wish you the best, because I know you're ready. Next night, he could hardly wait for a second show to end so he could catch a cleaning man and talk with him again. And as the owner passed his door, he paused to say goodnight. He asked the comedian, why are you sticking around? Is everything all right? He said, I'm waiting for old Freddy. I talked with him last night. He gave me some great advice, the kind I know is right. The owner said, but son, Old Freddie ain't been here for years. He came here when this place was built. He even died right here. Oh, thank you, old man. And what was your name? You've given me more than my fortune and fame.